right now. We are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Take a look at that. It is calm and quiet out there. 40 degrees to start your Sunday morning. How warm will it get? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. And look at this. We're checking in with her right now. Yeah, hey guys, good morning. Good morning, it's six o'clock. It is Sunday, December 17th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So we talked about yesterday. My parents are in town if you're awake, which I doubt they are. Hello, <laughs> good morning. We ended up walking around yesterday. Yeah. It was funny because in the shade, we got the gusts of wind you were talking about. Right. But in the sun, it was gorgeous. And today's going to be another beautiful day, Max. A huge temperature jump, though. Like right now, it's in the 30s, and in the afternoon, it's going to be in the 70s. Ooh. So, yeah, big temperature jump. Here's a look at temperatures right now. Just below freezing in Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Austin, and Junction, the higher elevations, and in the hill country. Briefly seeing freezing here just for the next hour or so. Otherwise, it's above freezing in San Antonio, where it's 38. Good morning, Del Rio. It's 38 degrees, 34 in Eagle Pass. 40 in Pleasanton. Take a look at out uh, toward uh, the airport right now. 38 degrees at the airport. New Braunfels at 38. Bulverde though just barely below freezing at uh, 29 degrees. 31 in Kerrville. 34 in Comfort and 34 in Bandera. But here's a look at today's forecast highs. A quick warm up for us. 71 degrees at the airport today in San Antonio. It'll be 71 in New Braunfels, 71 in Hondo, 73 in Bandera, 71 in Kerrville, 73 in Pleasanton and 71 in Floresville. It's very dry out there right now. That's why we're having the huge temperature jump. So be careful. Static shock alert. <laughs> A lot of uh, static electricity out there because of the dry air. Now it's going to be dry and pleasant most of the week here in San Antonio, but dampness will return Thursday and especially by Friday. So we'll talk about that coming up in a bit. And of course, I've got a Christmas sneak peek for you. Get you ready for the holiday season. Those details coming up in a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Sad story to tell you about an army veteran dead nearly three months after police say a driver hit and dragged him down the road. Now, as of now, the person responsible for hitting and killing this veteran, that suspect still not found. Obviously, no suspect apprehended. The charges not even upgraded. Case that's Daniela Ibarra spoke with the veterans family who were saying they are fighting for answers. We want to warn you what you're about to watch may be hard to view. So viewer discretion is advised. He should still be here with me, with us, with all my family. He should be here with us and he's not. Veronica Juarez's pain is almost unbearable. I miss him so much. All she has left of her 75-year-old dad, Robert Juarez, are pictures and memories. And we were blessed to, to have had him as, much, as long as we did. For nearly three months, Robert Juarez fought for his life in the hospital. Back on September 1st, the Army veteran was using his scooter to grab lunch. Police say Juarez was on the sidewalk of Whitewood near Military Drive when a pickup truck backed into him tipping the scooter into the street. That's when police say the driver of a white GMC SUV ran over Juarez, dragging him down the street. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about getting justice for my dad. Juarez died on November 27th. Police say the driver who they believe hit him is still out there. The charge that driver could face has yet to be upgraded. Police say they're waiting to see if the accident is what killed Juarez. Do you want the charges to be upgraded? Oh yes, definitely, yes. Veronica feels like police aren't doing enough to find the suspect. He told me that they didn't have no leads yet and that they were gonna like basically put it in the back. As painful as it is for Veronica to lose her dad, she wants to fight to keep his case alive. I will not let it go cold. I mean, I'm gonna keep asking questions and I'm gonna keep calling and keep asking. If you have any information that could help police find the person accused of hitting Juarez, you're asked to call their hotline. That number, 210-224-STOP. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Staying in Texas, in your Lone Star headlines, the Austin Police Department said one person shot at Barton Creek Square Mall yesterday afternoon. This is what we know right now. It happened a little before 5 p.m. near the AMC Theater and the Cheesecake Factory. The mall then had to go into lockdown for more than an hour. The victim, the person who was shot, taken to the hospital. Two more people injured due to the evacuation of the mall. Austin police say no suspect in custody yet, but they believe this was an isolated event. And they want to reiterate there is no threat to the general public. 
Well, large scale migrant shelter now opening in El Paso, all in an effort to help alleviate the border crisis. And the Border Servant Corps, well, they're opening up a migrant shelter in East El Paso near the El Paso airport. The group has already been working with uh, the local migrant shelter house in El Paso and the city of El Paso, trying to help as many migrants get shelters and get to the airport to traverse around the country. They were asked by the city to expand their services and even open a permanent space. There will be spaces for welcome, for intake. We'll have spaces where legal providers can come in and provide assistance to our guests. The shelter is set to have dorms of different sizes accommodating different families and people under different circumstances. The group still looking to provide relief for the whole state of Texas during this crisis. And speaking of the state of Texas, a study from a law firm in Louisiana showing that Texas ranks third in the most dragged out federal civil lawsuits in the entire country. Now, the firm that did the study, it's a personal injury firm, and the lawyers looked at 12 months of data across 13,000 lawsuits from the moment the case was filed to when it concluded in court. Behind Louisiana and Idaho, Texas taking number three, and it takes an average of at least 13 months for a federal civil lawsuit to be complete. The study shows that the Lone Star State also takes at least a year to fully process. Speaking of lawsuits, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones asking the families of the Sandy Hook shooting to accept a smaller number of the $1.5 billion, the damages that he owes from the lawsuit. The InfoWars host declaring bankruptcy. Remember, we told you about this when it happened. He was ordered to pay that money in damages to several families of the kids who were shot and killed at Sandy Hook because he made false claims about that 2012 school shooting. He said it was all a hoax. Now Jones now proposing a settlement that would at least guarantee these families at least five and a half million dollars for the next decade. An attorney representing some of the families say they are examining the proposal. And when it comes to money, there's a rising amount of backlash against tipping, not tipping at a restaurant where you sit down and you actually have servers, but tipping pretty much ubiquitous across the board. Some service industry workers, they're being tipped less and less as the months go on. ABC's Eva Pilgrim explains. This morning, the debate over tipping and the question of just how much gratuity is too much. From the cult classic Reservoir Dogs. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. To today's consumers. I think that it's evolved to the point where everything is asking for tips. Take 26-year-old Garrett B. Miller, who says that after being inundated by requests for too many tips, he's feeling what's now being called tipping fatigue. I will tip when I go out to eat at restaurants. I will tip when I order foods, but I won't tip and tend to turn it down when it's something that I already know that they're getting like a full wage for. Oh, $13, carry the three, leave a 50. New data from payroll provider Gusto reports that as of November, service sector workers in non-restaurant jobs made 7% less in tips versus a year ago, from making $138 an hour in tips to now $128 an hour. Oh, and nothing. Mm -hmm. I was a waitress and... Um... 25%, very nice. And while tipping is down in some places, the holidays are bringing cheer for others, like workers in restaurant jobs. Gusto reporting tips are now up by 3% from last November. I think inflation is leading people to be especially stingy about how much they're spending. And I think that this proliferation of tip prompts is making people question the very nature of tipping. But I think a lot of the time, if you're being asked for a tip at the point of sale, it's up to your discretion. I think it's nice to be generous if somebody went above and beyond, but I don't think it's always expected. And that was Eva Pilgrim reporting. Time now, 6.09, 39 degrees. All right, we are taking a live look out at the Alamo City. We are in the 30s. It is cold, but it's also early. It's going to warm up. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. How warm is it going to get today? We're going to check in with her in just a few minutes. Morning and welcome back. So residents and public officials out and about at Woodlawn Lake Park last night. Look at this. Santa there too. Lighting the holiday tree. Perfect, clear, and chilly night for holiday events across <laughs> the Alamo City. But the question is, oh, love. 
Is it going to be like that tonight? Oh, look at that. It's so seeing adorable. Those kids just enjoying Christmas and the holiday spirit. There really is something magical about it, isn't there? Well, we are going to be warming up today, Max, into the 70s. So we get a little bit of both, right? The cold morning, the comfortable afternoon, and I've even got a sneak preview of Christmas weather as Ooh. well here for us. White so. Christmas? Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody's hopes up for some snow on Christmas Day. But let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. It is 38 chilly degrees out there. Winds are from the northwest at about five miles per hour. Elsewhere, we're starting to see temperatures dip into uh, just below freezing up in the hill country. It's 31 in Kerrville, 32 in Fredericksburg, 30 in Junction, and 32 in Austin, but well above freezing in Uvalde, Del Rio, Creasa Springs, Catula, and in Pleasanton. As we zoom a little bit closer to San Antonio, 38 degrees in San Antonio, 34 in Bernie. But as you can see, up by 10 a little bit further, that's where we're running into a light freeze. Light freeze also in Bulverde. You know, in some of the valleys of the hill country, we could briefly reach freezing early this morning, but it'll stay above freezing in San Antonio 35 in Hondo. As we take a look at the weather setup, there are some cirrus clouds moving in from the west here, uh, but that's about it as far as our weather goes in San Antonio today. It's going to be a quiet day, not only in San Antonio, but across the state of Texas. Totally different story out to the east. We've got a couple of low pressure systems bringing some rain to parts of uh, the Great Lakes region and also a lot of rain to areas of Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia. In fact, let's take a look at some of this drier air moving in. These lows are pulling in that drier air from the north. That's why we're able to see that huge temperature jump. And what's fascinating when we look at current temperatures here in San Antonio at 38, temperatures are really in the 30s across most of the state of Texas. It's actually colder in San Antonio this morning than it is in Washington, D.C. and in New York. So again, that drier air allowing us to cool down and be pretty chilly. Now, as we look at the weather set up off to the west. Uh, upper level ridge of high pressure is going to settle over in the coming days, and that's what's going to keep us dry. I really don't see rain chances working their way back into the forecast until the end of the upcoming week. So today's weather, beautiful. We're already going to be in the 50s by 10, and then by noon, 66 degrees. In the afternoon, 71, around 3 and 4 o'clock, so warmer than seasonably average by about 5 degrees, and then a cool and chilly evening for any more Christmas activities. If you want to go out and look at lights or things like that, it's going to be nice. Don't forget the jacket and the hot chocolate. As we look at today's forecast highs in your neighborhood, 71 in Uvalde, 73 in Creases Springs, 73 in Catula, 69 in Gonzales, 73 in Canyon Lake, and 71 in Kerrville. It's a little bit warmer than seasonally average because of this dry air. And speaking of the dry air, it's going to stay very dry Monday, Tuesday, nice and dry on Wednesday. But by Thursday and Friday, that's when dew points are going to start to rise. It'll be noticeably muggy outside, so much so that by Thursday and Friday, I do think we will have some areas of mist and drizzle. Now, uh, rain chances are not going to be high. We're not going to have a lot of rainfall, but by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, some miss, some drizzle is possible. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about rainfall potential coming up in the next half hour. But for now, I want to give you a sneak peek to Christmas Eve Sunday and Christmas Day Monday, next Monday. A small rain chance potentially a week from today on Christmas Eve, 70 degrees. And then Christmas Day temperatures in the 60s. But for the week ahead, again, mainly quiet with chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons and rain chances picking up by the end of the week. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 616, still in the 30s. All right. Oh, look at this. Exciting news for the Rattlers over at St. Mary's University. We're going to take a look at their brand new president after a break. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Winston Aravelas has been named the next president of St. Mary's University after holding leadership positions there for nearly 15 years. He was dean of the University School of Science, Engineering, and Technology from 2009 all the way to 2021. He's been working on the new nursing program that we've actually been telling you about. Set to take over as president of the university in June and will be the university's first president of Asian descent. Okay, interesting study. Do y'all remember when artificial intelligence came out and you could use it on your phone, you could use it on your computer? Well, a new study from Stanford says ChatGPT has not increased cheating in schools. The university made an online anonymous survey 
pre-ChatGPT and was sent to students across 40 U.S. high schools. It found about 70% of students have cheated in school. And through the same survey now, post-ChatGPT, easy accessibility, that number has actually stayed the same or even slightly decreased since the debut of ChatGPT. Through another Stanford study, researchers say only 19% of teenagers have actually even used ChatGPT for school. So there you go. Maybe kids are more faithful than we thought. Time now, 621. It is still in the 30s out there, but it's going to warm up. Don't worry. Here's a fun question. Is San Antonio the new city of love? We're actually going to look at a new study from Wild Hub, friend of the show, that might give you, well, a little bit more love in your life. Good morning and welcome back. So we have a new report from WalletHub. It compared almost 200 cities across the country, finding out the best and worst cities for people who are single. Researchers looked at a number of factors, economics, dating opportunities, even options for things to do. San Antonio, uh, you know, we could be better, but we could be a lot worse. We ranked number 87 out of 182 cities on the list. Fun fact, Seattle ranked number one. I hard, find hard to believe. Columbia, Maryland ranked last. And just because of proximity reasons, we'll let you know that Austin placed fifth on the list. So doing some quick math, mm -hmm. um, San Antonio placed in the lower 50th percentile. Not great. No, not great. But it kind of makes sense. Mm. And if you want to make an interesting impression on your next date, you might mm. want to bring them this, all right? Doritos is out with an 84-proof alcoholic beverage based off of its nacho cheese flavor. That's 42% alcohol, mm. by the way. It's available online and costs $65 for 750-milliliter Dorito for 750 milliliters. Doritos recommends mm. mixing it with tequila or mezcal to make a Bloody Mary or a margarita. Okay, so. Now. Um, uh, okay. Here's the thing. They've, it depends on how much it actually tastes like cheese, okay? Because if it actually tastes like cheese, that's a no for me. <laughs> it's a no for me. But dog. if it's got like a little spice to mm, it, it okay. might be like an ancho reyes or something like that where like you can make a spicy margarita with it or something. But I, I don't think I'll be trying it anytime soon. So our producer extraordinaire, MJ, she brought us the brisket tacos from Garcia's Did yesterday. Did you bring us shots of the nacho cheese? Maybe. <laughs> if she's so inclined, she could bring us a margarita with the Doritos in it. Max, um, it's 626 in the morning. That's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Time now, 626. It's in the 30s, right? Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. Hey everyone, happy holidays. I want to test out my KSAT colleagues' knowledge of Christmas carols and their lyrics. So I got my fancy tuner fork. Uh, let's go. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Yes, you got it. <laughs> Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide Carol. Yes. <laughs> Yuletide Carol. Yuletide Carol. Did it. Ooh. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning. It happy is December Sunday. 17th. So my parents are in from Philadelphia, yeah. and we were walking around yesterday, and my mom had a jacket on, mm -hmm. my dad had a sweatshirt, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, well, we're coming from the East Coast. We prepared yeah. for East Coast winter weather. Not exactly what we got yesterday. No, no, no. It ended up getting up into the upper 60s. And today we're going to be even warmer. But if you step outside right now, it's cold, okay? It's 38 degrees in San Antonio, 38 in New Braunfels. It's barely at freezing in Kerrville and in Kennedy. Now, Max was asking a great question during the break. So how do y'all feel about a little meteorology lesson? Okay, so look out toward Rock Springs, 50 degrees. 32 in Kerrville. Rock Springs is in the hill country, so you would think it would be just as cold as Kerrville. However, the sensor for the temperature in Rock Springs is at a higher elevation than in Kerrville. And in the morning, this time of year, 
we have what's called a temperature inversion, where the temperature actually rises with height. So it's warmer up where that sensor is in Rock Springs at 50 degrees than it is in Kerrville, where that center sensor is in a valley and it's colder. So an 18 degree temperature difference just because of a few feet of difference in the atmosphere. Really cool to see that. That's your meteorology lesson for the day. Promise we'll keep things a little bit more straightforward here. This morning, 37 degrees temperature jump, big temperature jump by this afternoon. We're going to be at 71. That is a 34 degree temperature swing, all because we've got some very dry air in place. That dry air is going to keep us dry and pleasant most of the week. It isn't until Thursday, Friday that we start to see some dampness return. And are you curious about Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? I've got that Christmas sneak peek coming up, Max. Thank you, Sarah. All right, the police scanners this weekend, they have been going off. Six shootings that we have been following through just the last 48 hours. And a lot of them happened just between 8 and 1020 Friday night across the city. Four of them happening just within 12 minutes of each other. Two of those shootings actually turned out to be deadly. So we're going to start the one north of downtown at apartment complex 3200 block of North Loop 1604 West. So in this shooting, we know 22 year old Donovan Bowie calling police saying that he shot his girlfriend just after 930. When investigators got there, Bowie surrendering to police, the woman alleged girlfriend pronounced dead at the scene. The reason for the shooting remains unknown. The investigation still ongoing. We do know Bowie has been charged with murder about 10 minutes later. Police on the east side called to a different shooting. This one, the intersection of Mittman and Arthur. Uh, witnesses there say a man was standing near the intersection when the vehicle drove by. Someone inside that vehicle shot at the victim. Now, the vehicle drove off. That man eventually taken to a nearby hospital. He also died. Again, these are just two of the six shootings that happened in just a two and a half hour time span this weekend on Friday night. So make sure to stay with us. We have all this information, a full breakdown on all six of them. The article, you can find it. It should be on the homepage of KSAT.com. All right, in your morning headlines, a story that we've been following closely, especially in the aftermath of when it happened back in January. This taking place in Virginia. Now, the mother of a first grader accused of shooting his teacher, the mother sentenced to two years in prison. 25-year-old Dazer Taylor charged with felony child neglect and a misdemeanor count of recklessly leaving a firearm in the reach of her six-year-old. Remember, this all happened in Virginia. Taylor's son used the gun to shoot his teacher, Abby Zwerner, in the hand and chest while at school. Meanwhile, Zwerner has filed a $40 million lawsuit. This lawsuit alleges Newport News Public Schools ignored warning signs and that they were aware of the student's, quote, history of random violence and did nothing to deter it. Well, it has been one full year since four University of Idaho students were stabbed and killed in their home. The university announcing that they are tearing down the house where the crime happened. Now, this demolition set to happen during winter break on December 28th. Attorneys on both sides of the case, they've consented to the teardown, but families of one of the victims has said they don't want to destroy it until the trial is over. The trial date not even set yet in this murder case against Brian Koberger. Now, the university's president says it is time to remove the house. Let the collective healing of the full community begin. A new report from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development says homelessness across the United States reaching a record high this year. 2023 annual homeless assessment report shows more than 650,000 people experienced homelessness on a single night in January. That's a 12% increase from the previous year and the highest number since reporting started in 2007. The data also shows families with children made up nearly 30% of homelessness. And ahead of the holidays, Southwest Airlines reminding plus-size travelers of its free seat offer. So people who can't comfortably sit within armrests, well, they get an extra seat for free if available. Now, Southwest says eligible travelers, they need to alert Southwest ahead of the travel and buy two seats. Then they can actually get a refund for the second one. Plus size passengers with documentation can pre-board to secure adjacent seats. Southwest says the perks not available on every flight. And speaking of flights, should expect delays at busy airports through the holiday season. Airlines for America predicts 2.8 million passengers 
will start flying this Wednesday and the traffic, the high traffic, well, it lasts until January 8th. That would mean a 16% increase in the number of passengers compared to last year. The holiday period seems more spread out than usual. The FAA predicts a peak the Thursday before Christmas and American Airlines is forecasting their peak for that Friday. Well, the announcement earlier this week that Amazon, Target and Walmart would stop selling water beads marketed to children. It was an important reminder that shoppers need to stay aware when it comes to kids, toys and safety. ABC's Karen Kafa sat down with pediatricians to discuss that even though last minute shopping is hectic, safety should always be the top priority. An exciting time for kids and new holiday toys can be risky if adults aren't mindful. Kids are curious. <laughs> That's just how they are. Um, and that curiosity can sometimes lead to, you know, um, accidents. Dr. Perva Grover of Cleveland Clinic Children says ingestion of toys, small batteries and magnets are a worry in her pediatric emergency department. We are very careful about those kids who have ingested these potentially life threatening um, objects, which are often part of toys or part of things around the, ho the house during holiday time. It underscores the importance of reading the labeling on toy packaging to determine whether it's age appropriate. Often it will tell you if the product contains small parts or other hazards that would be inappropriate for those young children. Joan Lawrence, Senior Vice President for Standards and Regulatory Affairs for the Industry Group, the Toy Association, says U.S. toys must meet rigorous safety standards, but some online resellers may not be peddling the real deal. You're going to want to make sure that you shop with a retailer you know and trust. You're going to want to do some research on the product. Read the listing carefully. Are there typos or inconsistencies in the description or the photos? And as smart toys continue to boom in the children's space, Lauren says a gift with internet connection can be a good time for a talk about tech. Teach them about privacy, teach them about never sharing their information online or photos online, those kinds of things. Um, teach them about having a password and changing it frequently. And parents and caregivers should familiarize themselves with a smart toys technology and devices with cameras and microphones that may require additional steps to protect a child's privacy. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. All right, we're coming off a win. The Spurs are at least, and they play again today. Let's see if we can keep the winning streak alive, and there's extra motivation to do exactly that because today, the Tony Parker Hall of Fame game taking place during halftime. Today's 2.30 game taken on the Pelicans. Fans will receive a free t-shirt. There's also going to be Tony Parker themed games, special merch. Parker also will be there during the halftime tribute ceremony for his re-raising of his retired jersey banner with a newly embellished Hall of Fame status. All right, so we know the holidays right around the corner. So we have a lot to talk about. That's why we have two special leading essays today. The first one coming up at 8 a.m. We have Monic Dillon with Victory Capital. Look, we talk about inflation, we talk about rising prices, we talk about interest rates a lot. Well, Monique Dillon with Victory Cap, he's going to be joining us live. We're going to be talking about what that means for you, what 2023 has looked like, and the implication of interest rates on local family spending and mortgage rates, and what to look for in 2024. Then, at 8.30, we are joined by Soldiers Angels, a local nonprofit working to help military men and women around the country, around the world during the holiday season. We're going to check in with them, talk about their mission, and explain how you can step up and help out. If you want to be a part of the conversation, if you want your questions heard, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then, of course, you got to join us 8 and 8.30 after Good Morning America. Time now, 6.40. It's still cold out there, but it's going to warm up. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a few moments. Take a look at this. We asked and our community stepped up and answered. Wreaths across America spending Saturday laying wreaths on veteran headstones. We're actually gonna hear from military spouse on why this event is so special. And of course, it is calm, cold, and quiet right now. What is the rest of the day gonna look like? I think we might even see a sunrise in the distance. We're gonna check in with Sarah. Good morning and welcome back. So, like we say, Christmas, it's coming up and we haven't forgotten about Ukraine. They are celebrating there as well. Beautiful lights, this is the capital, Kyiv. Children and adults alike enjoying, we just saw the carousel rides, skating on the ice rink. Ukrainians say they're soaking up as much normalcy in their lives as possible, marking the second Christmas after Russian forces invaded Ukraine. Even the below zero temperatures, not deterring any 
of the holiday fun. And back here at home, every holiday season, wreaths across America lays wreaths on the headstones of veterans all over the U.S. And their mission led them to Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery yesterday. It really was amazing. I had a couple of people actually send me videos from the cemetery. Some of the volunteers stepping up, helping out wreaths across America. 40,000 of the headstones at Fort Sam have a wreath for the holidays, remembering those who served. The Edmund family moved to San Antonio years ago, but this kind of gesture it's nothing new to them. One of the spouses saying they've laid wreaths on veterans' headstones for years, and she hopes her children carry on this tradition when they get old enough. It's a humbling experience, and I don't know, it's all about giving back. Hundreds of cemeteries all over the U.S. will be impacted by this campaign this holiday season. Beautiful gesture there. It really is amazing. All right, well, you know what's also beautiful? Look a at great this. Great sunrise, isn't it? You can kind of see downtown San Antonio oh. there. We've got some wispy cirrus clouds. It is cold, though, outside, Max. It's in the 30s right now. 38 degrees in San Antonio, 37 uh, out at uh, Port SA, 38. Stinson, you can see that temperature is just below freezing in Bulverde. It's 38 in New Braunfels, 36 in Rio Medina, 34 in Bandera, 33 in Kerrville, and 34 at Bernie Stage Airfield. Well, in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, even though we're in the 30s right now, we are quickly going to warm today under sunny skies. 54 by 10, already nearly a 20 degree jump by 10 o'clock in the morning. Then around noon, we'll be in the mid 60s. And for the afternoon high today, We'll be at 71 degrees this afternoon. No major rain chances in the forecast for us through at least Thursday and Friday. So a dry day with a high right around 71 in Yavaldi. It'll be 71 in Del Rio. Cthulhu, you'll be at 73, 71 in Pleasanton, 73 in Canyon Lake, 71 in Kerrville. A neighborhood he view here in San Antonio will be in the upper 60s in Bernie, Holotus, and Bulverde. 73 in Canyon Lake, 71 at the airport, 71 in Hondo, 71 in Floresville, about six degrees above the seasonable average of uh, 65. It is very dry outside right now. In fact, the dry air is why we have been able to cool down overnight quickly and why we're going to warm up quickly today. Now, with that dry air in place for the next several days, we're going to have cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. Very dry tomorrow, dry on Tuesday and pleasant on Wednesday, but by Thursday and Friday, that's when the humidity will be coming up a little bit. In fact, so much so that I think we will see some mist and drizzle on Thursday and Friday of this upcoming week. So kind of a gray day by Thursday and Friday. But we've got several days here to enjoy the sunshine, the cool mornings and the comfortable afternoons. Our next significant rain chance again Thursday, Friday. This is a look at Thursday at upper level low will be moving over and by Friday some showers are possible, especially up toward Dallas and through central Texas. But we'll be on the tail end here in San Antonio. Then as we head into Saturday, a few hit or miss showers hours and by Christmas Eve on Sunday, that upper level low will be moving off. And so we should get some dry air by Christmas Day itself. How much rain? Not much. The most amount of rain is going to fall up near the Dallas area, about an inch of rainfall. Here in San Antonio, we are going to be lucky if we can see a quarter of an inch of rainfall. Less than a quarter of an inch of rainfall is expected throughout San Antonio, with even less down toward Catula, Eagle Pass, and Del Rio. This is go just going to be kind of that nuisancey mist and drizzle situation, and we need the rain. In fact, across Texas, this area, San Antonio to Austin, up to the hill country is in one of the worst spots for the drought right now. Still experiencing extreme drought from San Pleasanton all the way up to Fredericksburg and Austin with a moderate drought out toward Del Rio. So we could use some rain. So it's not good news when it comes to the rainfall here. Unfortunately, again, just a few uh, drizzly chances for rain by Thursday and Friday. Otherwise, cool mornings in the 40s, comfortable afternoons in the 60s. We'll notice that clouds will be be increasing by Wednesday and then that chance for rain on Friday and Saturday. Now just beyond our uh, seven day forecast, we've got Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So here's your sneak peek Christmas Eve on Sunday, a small rain chance temperatures near 70 and by Christmas Day on Monday we are going to be in the 60s and it's trending drier. So perhaps a cool morning on Christmas morning might be worth uh, 
putting some logs on the fire early on Christmas morning, but temperatures are not going to be too warm or too cold on Christmas Day here in San Antonio. Our hottest Christmas on record, you want to take a guess? <sighs> I'll say 93. 90 degrees in the All 50s. Right. Okay, so you were correct okay. there. So yeah, but we won't be anywhere near that this Christmas. Okay, we're trying to get a, a preview of Christmas. We're going to Fredericksburg today. Oh, you are. It's a good day to walk around. Yes, a beautiful day to walk around. And of course, they've got a good Christmas market there. So that's exciting. <laughs> All right, time now, 6.50. It's still cold out. I know, it's in the 30. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. Okay, so I'm sure you know what Spotify Wrapped is. It gives you kind of a overall analysis, a trend of what you have listened to through the year. Well, Grubhub has released their own list of their most delivered food items for 2023. French fries, the top ordered side dish, and it's not just with burgers anymore. More than 600,000 customers paired the fries with a salad. So there you go, you gotta carb up to eat the salad. People also kept things spicy. 91,000 customers added sriracha to their meals. That makes sense, there was a sriracha shortage. And then there were more than 10 million late night orders for coffee. I can't drink coffee after five o'clock, I'll be up. All right, and of course, Grubhub delivers on Christmas. So here are a few places open on Christmas as well. Ambler Texas Kitchen, open from five to 6 p.m. Bordros Texas Bistro, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Frederick's open on Christmas from 5 to 9.30. Kona Grill, 11 a.m. to midnight. Mitieta Cafe, oh, they're always open, of course. 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., just, just a few for a full list of restaurants. Head on over to ksat.com. And of course, speaking of food, the Pearl Brewery set to open what is being called the largest culinary market in the Southwest, Pullman Market. It's going to span 40,000 square feet. It's going to include four restaurants in addition to four food to go kiosk, a wine and beer section, and of course, we're in Texas, gotta represent Texas-based produce selections. Here's the cool part, it's coming soon. If you've driven on Newell, you've already seen some of the construction. It is set to debut spring of 2024. And then, special shout out to our own Mike Osterhage. She just texted me, friend of the show, and you've probably watched him. He wanted everyone to know, first off, good morning. Second of all, today is, we can come back on cam for this one, Today is the anniversary of the Wright Brothers' first flight in 1903. So there's your fun fact by Mike Ostridge. Time now is 6.55. It is still in the 30s. Here's what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning, coming up here on GMA. Millions on alert for that major storm system sweeping up the East Coast this weekend. From Florida to Maine, torrential rain and high winds. The flood watch is in place, plus what it could mean for holiday travel plans. Our weather team is tracking it all. And a health alert here, what the CDC is saying about the rise in flu and COVID cases as some hospitals are treating more patients with respiratory illnesses, what you need to know. And finally, counting down to Christmas, the points Guy joins us with this season's airfare bargains, and we're breaking down the prices for those last minute gifts. It's all coming up right here on GMA. Good morning, and welcome back. Before you go, in case you missed it, don't worry. Petco in San Antonio is still waiving all pet adoption fees today. All pets come with heartworm prevention, updated vaccines, microchips, spayed, neutered. Those adoption locations are on the list on your screen. If you have to squint like me and you can't exactly see them, we have all the information right now. Just head to ksat.com. Mm, just think about my pet. Oh. <laughs> That's such a good event. 71 today for the high. In the week ahead, it's going to be chilly in the mornings in the 40s and 50s, but afternoons will be comfortable in the 60s and 70s. By the end of the week, I think drizzle and mist and cloud cover return. So kind of gray into an otherwise sunny week. And rain chances, I mean, a rainfall amount is not going to be high. Maybe if we're lucky up to a quarter of an inch of rainfall as we head into the weekend of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Don't go anywhere. See you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that. It is gorgeous out there. Picturesque 40 degrees, so it's a brisk 
Sunday morning here in San Antonio, but it is going to heat up. It is beautiful out there right now. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday, December 17th. Thank you so much for starting Good your morning, morning with us. So, yes, December 17th. It's starting to feel a little bit more like Christmas, at least in the mornings. Yes. Yesterday, kind of the same start, ended up being gorgeous. Exactly. And take yesterday's weather and copy and paste it to today. But even, in fact, we'll be warmer in the afternoon than we were yesterday. But it is cold, Max, to yeah. start the day, definitely. Take a look outside at temperatures 38 in San Antonio, 39 in New Braunfels, 39 in Del Rio. Good morning, Eagle Pass. It's 36 degrees, 42, 32 rather, in Kerrville. So just below freezing in Kerrville, just below freezing in Bernie and Bolverde and Comfort. Some pockets in the Hill Country experiencing a brief freeze, but temperatures are already on the rise. Cold start to the day, but this afternoon we're going to be in the 70s. It'll be 71 in San Antonio, upper 60s for areas like Bernie and Bulverde, but 71 in Kerrville, 71 in Hondo, Nixon, Smiley, 71, 71 in Yavaldi. The reason for the quick warm up is because it is so dry outside, so much so in fact, Here's your static shock forecast. Dry air creates static shocks very easily, so be aware of that today. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of dry air out there. In fact, a lot of dry air for most of the week. Dry and pleasant most of the week with chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. However, by Thursday and Friday, some dampness is going to return to the forecast. And then we head into the weekend. And of course, Sunday is Christmas Eve. Monday, next Monday is Christmas Day. So coming up, I've got your Christmas sneak peek forecast. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A tragic story to tell you about an Army veteran hit and dragged by a car back in September. We now know he has passed away, but his family, they are still fighting, searching for the person responsible for this crash. 75-year-old Robert Juarez hospitalized after this crash on Whitewood near military. Now, San Antonio police say Juarez was in his scooter when a vehicle backed into him. It tipped over, so Juarez was in the road. Police say then the driver of a white GMC SUV ran over Juarez, dragging him down the road. That driver, who now faces a felony charge, still on the loose. They have not been caught. Juarez's daughter saying she still wants justice. I want to make sure, again, that these people see, you know, that they get what they deserve, which is justice. Like, they need to pay for what they did. Now she says she's still fighting to prevent her father's case from going cold. So if you have any information that can help investigators find the person who did this, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number you can find on KSAT.com. It is 210-224-STOP. And another crime to tell you about, Kerrville police arresting a woman who they believe shot and killed a man. But that's not what the woman told police when they arrived, when she called 911. This is what we know right now. Yesterday morning, 26-year-old Ashley Castillo told the 911 operator that the victim, 22-year-old Damon Tamke, had shot himself in the head inside the apartment on Singing Wind Drive. Now, a handgun was found in the apartment. Evidence gathered over the course of the investigation. Well, it led investigators to arrest and charge Castillo with murder. Okay, we talk about big picture things a lot. We talk about inflation, how times are tough for so many families. And for you out there watching, you've probably heard us reference the Federal Reserve. We know they use, infl they use interest rates to help fight inflation. So to help break down what is happening, he is already on the screen. Monik Dillon with Victory Capital. So, Monik, just to start us off, what is the exact purpose of the Fed raising interest rates? Uh, so first of all, thanks for having me today. Uh, well, one of the things that we're trying to do is cool down the economy. And, and why were they doing that? They were doing it to get inflation back in control. So after the COVID pandemic, uh, when they had the lower rates, basically putting a lot of liquidity and free money out in the marketplace, uh, it pushed prices up. And that became a real challenge for, for the consumers and the economy. So that's what they were trying to do when they're raising interest rates is cool down the economy and lower inflation back to their target. So when we, we rise, when we raise interest rates, obviously the hope is to bring down inflation, but there are other implications, other repercussions of these higher rates. What are they and, and how do the consumers see the alternative impacts? Sure. You know, one of the things is just higher borrowing costs, right? So when, when the Fed increases interest rates, costs on mortgages increase, you know, we saw them get close to 8% for 30-year mortgages recently. 
auto loans get more expensive, and then credit card debt becomes even harder to pay off because those rates go up over time as, as the Fed increases rates. So not only is inflation challenging for the average consumer, then on the back end of it, it's costing more to borrow money. And, and that is by design how the Fed cools down the economy because that causes people to spend less and then that's how you can maybe get inflation back into control. So it's almost sandwiching families. You have to fight inflation and then it is more expensive to use your credit card to get a car to get a house. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. That makes sense. So for families watching, what are ways, actions that they can take that they single-handedly can help fight inflation? Yeah, you know, I always talk about it's important, particularly like this time of year, the end of the year and the new year is about to begin. Sit down and create a family budget. It's so important to know and to have a plan on where you're going to spend your money and where money's coming in, especially when the cost of goods is going up. So your groceries are costing more, any other uh, clothing's costing more. Everything you think about can, is, is costing more than it did probably a couple of years ago. So you have to sit down and say, where am I going to actually spend that money? And, and part of that is, you know, there's saving for a rainy day because what we don't know is the higher interest rates, what are they going to do to the economy ultimately in 2024 and beyond? So saving for that rainy uh, rainy day. The other thing is if you have uh, assets to invest or you have a, a little bit left over to invest or you're worried about the future, being in the market is very important because uh, trying to time it is, is going to be very difficult on when the right time is to get back into the market. And then other things like ancillary things like, you know, college tuition is impacted by inflation. So college savings plans can help you with that over time and, and things like that. So um, there's a number of different ways that, that families can address it, but uh, none of them are silver bullet, of course. Of course. And we know we have a lot of families watching this morning that, that maybe don't have that much access to throw in the market or something of that nature. Have there been positive silver linings almost of higher interest rates, you know, higher yields for savings accounts? Yeah, that's definitely one thing that's been a positive for the average consumer. So somebody who might have been just keeping some cash or, you know, the rainy day fund in cash now can actually earn a decent rate on it. Uh, so whereas cash is essentially become a, an asset class, if you will, where it wasn't uh, when the rates were at zero. And so what's that allowing people to do is actually uh, combat inflation in a way because it's trying to give them an, a rate of return to, to keep up with uh, the cost of goods going up. But at some point, um, that can't, that, that'll have to change and that's not sustainable. So then they need to start thinking about what do I do with that? Do I do I start to go into some fixed income a little bit? Do I start to, you know, put it away in, in stocks and things like that? But they have to think about that going forward. OK, you kind of alluded to it. 2024, obviously 2023 has been difficult to anticipate with all the ups and downs of the Fed. So what is your outlook for next year? One of the things I think investors or just the, the average consumer can can expect is, you know, this year has been a, a real volatile one for interest rates themselves. Um, people trying to guess what the Fed is going to do. Are they done raising rates? Are they going to cut rates? And, and so I think that'll continue into 2024 where um, we'll see if, you know, they, they how many times they cut rates, uh, how much they cut rates by. But that's going to have a big impact as the market tries to predict that, if you will. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of variables that are probably going to come up in 2024 that will create some volatility, too. Like there's an election. There could be geopolitical conflicts. And so I think the best thing to do in that environment is to be diversified. Right. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Um, you want to have a diversified portfolio if you are investing in the market. All right. Good advice. Monik Dillon with Victory Capital. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And for anyone who missed any of the interview or wants to go back, watch it, take some notes, figure out what you're going to do. You're going to have it on KSAT.com throughout the morning. Time now, just about 810, 40 degrees. Still ahead, Apple, the product, not the food, introducing some new safety measures to the devices, how it can help you if your phone gets stolen. Plus, we talk about the cooler temps. 40 degrees out there right now. Some of these cooler temps might have a big impact on your skin. We have some advice how to keep your skin, well, make sure it doesn't dry out. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. So, if you look down on the bright part of your screen, it's 40 degrees out. We know the weather can have a significant impact on your skin. 
As we've been seeing cooler temps here, at least in the morning in San Antonio, it is important to know how to take care of it. Well, Mandy Gaither has some tips to protect you through these winter months. It's the season of dry skin. If you're feeling the itch, you're not alone. We have the heat running inside and then the humidity levels also drop, leaving the air and skin pretty parched. Dermatologist Shilpi Caterpaul with Cleveland Clinic says eczema can flare up in the wintertime, but your skin can feel dry whether you have a pre-existing condition or not. She says the first line of defense is a humidifier. We want to set it to at least 50% high or higher, and that can push some of that moisture back into the skin. Ditch the long, hot showers that can add to dryness, opting for shorter, lukewarm ones instead, and use mild, fragrance-free soap that moisturizes. After your shower, you want to pat dry instead of rubbing your skin. Um, by rubbing, it increases friction, and then friction is going to strip the skin of that moisture and also increase dryness. Within five minutes of drying off, Cater Paul says it's time to moisturize to help keep skin healthy and hydrated. You want to look for fragrance-free lotions that contain an ingredient called ceramide. Ceramide is what's going to help to repair the skin barrier and trap that water in the skin. Finally, watch how you wash your clothes, Cater Paul says, by detergents and fabric softeners that are fragrance free. A lot of that fragrance can be trapped in the skin and if that's touching us daily that can lead to more irritation and make eczema worse. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And it's definitely a day that you want a little extra <laughs> hand lotion, a little extra chapstick because it's so dry outside with two points in the 30s. One pop quiz. Okay, okay I'm probably going to get wrong. Let's see. Okay, let's see it. Max, why? Are we able to see temperatures in the 30s in the morning and in the 70s in the afternoon? Because we live in San Antonio. Okay, yep. But it's also <laughs> because the air is dry. Dry air warms and cools down quickly. So I'll give you a passing grade. I'll get like half credit. Sounds good. Okay, outside right now, cirrus clouds out there. Those high, thin, wispy clouds, which are completely made of ice crystals. 38 degrees. Northwest winds at about 5 miles per hour. As we take a look at temperatures out there this morning, it's 32 in Kerrville. So we do have a brief light freeze up in the hill country, but temperatures are already on the rise. 37 in Uvalde, 39 in Del Rio. Good Good morning, Carissa Springs, 36 degrees, 35 in Kennedy, 35 in Gonzales, and 39 in New Braunfels. As we zoom in a little bit closer, still below freezing for Bull Verde, Comfort in Kerrville, but Bernie getting above freezing now. 39 in Converse, 39 in New Braunfels, and 36 in Hondo. As we take a look at the weather setup, there's those wispy cirrus clouds moving in over San Antonio, but that's it. It's going to be a quiet day across the state of Texas. Different story out to the east. You can see there's quiet a bit of rain around dual system of low pressures uh, areas of low pressure. We've got some rain across the Great Lakes and a lot of rainfall for parts of Georgia and the Carolinas. We've got this systems pulling in dry air from the north. That's why it's so dry outside. And fun fact of the day in San Antonio right now, it's 38 degrees. It is colder in San Antonio this morning than it is in New York and Washington, D.C. and even colder than in Cleveland, Ohio and parts of the Midwest. West uh, San Antonio is colder than Chicago right now this morning, all because of that dry air in place. And in the wake of those lows, as they move off to the east, this high pressure system is going to settle over, keeping us dry for most of the week in San Antonio. By Thursday, Friday, there will be a bit of a weather pattern change. But for today, it's just going to be nice and sunny and quickly becoming comfortable after this cold morning. 54 at 10, 66 at noon, so a quick 30 degree temperature jump in the span of a few hours by this afternoon 71 around three or four o'clock and then this evening temperatures will quickly cool under clear skies if you have Sunday night plans especially outdoor plans make sure to bring the jacket with you it's going to get into the 40s by 9 p.m. as for forecast highs in your neighborhood it's going to be 71 in Del Rio 69 in Gonzales 73 in Canyon Lake 71 in Fredericksburg and Kerrville 73 in Cachula and Laredo and 71 in Hondo. Now I mentioned that it's very dry outside. As we take a look at our humidity forecast, it's going to stay dry through about Wednesday. Not quite as dry Wednesday as it will be today through Tuesday, but still pleasant. It's by Thursday and Friday that we start to see humidity become noticeable. Not only will you feel it outside, but you may see it. It looks like we could have some mist and drizzle as on Thursday, but especially by Friday around San Antonio. 
Antonio, and that will not be amounting to much. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to be talking a little bit about rainfall potential across the state of Texas, but here in San Antonio, really just some mist and drizzle possible Friday, Saturday, and even a small rain chance on Sunday, which is Christmas Eve. So as we look at your sneak peek forecast a week from today, Christmas Eve on Sunday, a small rain chance, but temperatures should rebound to near 70 degrees in the afternoon. Then by Christmas Day, it's starting to look like it will be a dry day on Christmas Day perhaps a chilly morning and a cool afternoon in the 60s. So not too hot, not too cold on Christmas Day itself. As for the rest of this week, though, we do expect chilly mornings in the 40s and 50s, cool afternoons and comfortable afternoons rather in the 60s and 70s, and then temperatures uh, really starting to be a little warm in the mornings when we start to see the rain chance work its way back in by Friday. Coming up, more on those rainfall potential totals through the week, Max. Okay, so a good day to walk around? Great day to walk around. Oh my goodness. 71 yep. and sunny, this is beautiful. Yeah, and then by tonight, if you want to do some Christmas lights or things like that, it's going to be chilly enough that you'll want the jacket, but hey, it'll feel a little bit more like Christmas outside. Love that. All right, time now, just about 820, 40 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA. The latest information on important recalls that you and your family should know about, especially as it pertains to food that could be in your pantry, including one that has been ongoing, even including people getting sick. What you need to know, that way you can throw the food away. Plus, take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, six, five, fireball seven, daily four, Five, six, zero, five, fireball three, cash five, 11, 17, 27, 28, 32, Lotto, Texas, 11, 24, 41, 43, 46, 47. Here we go, Powerball three, nine, 10, 20, 62. Powerball is 25, power play three. Good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back and happy Sunday. We have some consumer news to tell you about. Americans surprising economists across the country. We spent a little bit more than we thought we would in November. According to a report from the Commerce Department, retail sales rebounded in November and rebounded about 0.3% after declining in October. That means that we are spending probably more than we should. Now, it does point to inflation possibly easing up and the job market remaining strong because people have money to spend or they're just spending more on their credit card, which they're gonna to have to pay back later. All right, now to your phone. iPhone, well, and Apple, trying to keep thieves away from your personal information. A lot of people have really vital, important financial information on their phones, so the company is currently working on a feature that will make it more difficult for thieves to get into your device. The stolen device protection feature, it's actually gonna add biometrics, which means users are gonna to have to scan their face or their finger to access the important data. That extra security measure is only enacted when a user, a user is away from a familiar location like work or like home. Okay, if you are a Starbucks fan, listen up. Starbucks feeling extra generous this holiday season. The coffee chain giving out free hot chocolates every weekend for the rest of December. All you have to do, be a Starbucks rewards member. Sarah Spivey, you Starbucks rewards member? Me neither. I'm not. I'm not either. We I, might have, we're probably the only two millennials that are not. I was going to say, we might have Star to jump <laughs> on here. All right, so if you are and you're listening, members can also get half off a drink every Thursday afternoon through the month of December from noon to 6 p.m. Here's the good news, Sarah Spivey. We can both sign up for free on Starbucks website or their apps. Okay, give me all your information. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Time now, just about 826, 41 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA, including more on the weather. Taking a live look out there. We are starting off in the 40s, but it is going to be a picture perfect day in San Antonio. I make fun of people on the East Coast because it is cold. It is raining over there, but here it is gorgeous. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. So happy Sunday. We talked about it yesterday. Parents uh -huh. are in town from the East Coast. They didn't know what to wear in terms of the weather. <laughs> so yesterday we, we planned to walk around. We did walk around, and it was funny because in the shadows, it was a little cold, it was yeah, windy. in the shade. But then in the, the sun, it was perfect. Yeah, it's funny. This is that time of year where you dress in layers if you're in San Antonio because you need the jackets in the morning and you do not need them in the afternoon. So that's what you can tell them today. Bring, bring, bring they might be sweater. watching. If you're watching, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for watching. Yeah, wear layers today. <laughs>
Yeah, in fact, it's cold out there right now. Here's a look at temperatures this morning. 38 in San Antonio, 34 in Kerrville, 39 in New Braunfels, 38 in Uvalde. It briefly reached freezing in Fredericksburg, Kerrville, Bernie. Those areas briefly saw freezing. Today in San Antonio, we got down to 36 degrees earlier this morning. But guess what? By the afternoon, it's going to be 71. That, my friends, is a 35 degree temperature swing from the start of the day to the forecast in the afternoon. That is an impressive temperature swing, especially in winter when the sun angle is a little lower. And the reason for that impressive temperature swing is because it's so dry outside. You can feel how dry it is. And it's going to be dry and pleasant for most of the week with chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons. It isn't until Thursday and Friday that we start to see some dampness return to the forecast. We'll talk about that and how much rain we could potentially see. Don't get your hopes up for too much. And then beyond the weekend, we've got Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So I'll have a look at that forecast coming up for you in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. It has been a busy weekend for the police. Police scanners far from quiet through at least the last 36 hours. These six shootings all happen between 8 and 10 20 p.m. Friday night across the city. Four of them happening just within 12 minutes of each other. Two of those shootings turned out to be deadly. So this is what we know right now. This is the shooting just north of downtown. This is an apartment complex in the 3200 block of North Loop 1604 West. 22 year old Donovan Bowie called police saying he shot his girlfriend just after 930. Now, when investigators got there, Donovan Bowie surrendered to officers. The woman, though, she's pronounced dead on the scene. Now, the reasoning for the shooting remains unknown, but we do know is that Donovan Bowie is now facing charges of murder. About 10 minutes later, police on the east side, they were called to a different shooting. This one, the intersection of Mittman and Arthur. A witness is there telling police a man was simply standing near the intersection when a vehicle drove by. Someone was inside. Someone shot him. Now, the vehicle drove off. That man eventually taken to a nearby hospital. He also died. As for the suspects, police still investigating. Again, these are just two of the six shootings that happened within two and a half hours of each other. Friday night, four of them in a 12 minute span. We have a full breakdown when, where, all six happened. You can find that article right now. Just head to ksat.com. Well, heading overseas, protests continue in countries all across the world, but a new protest arising in Israel after the Israeli military admitted they accidentally killed three hostages. The IDF in a video saying that the shooting of those hostages was against the rules of engagement, stating that the shooting occurred in combat and under pressure. ABC's Johnny Fernandez has the details on what Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called an unbearable tragedy. Saturday, protesters gathered in Tel Aviv demanding answers after their Israeli military admitted to accidentally shooting and killing three Israeli hostages in northern Gaza on Friday. The men identified as 28-year-old Yotam Haim, 26-year-old Elon Shamritz, and 22-year-old Samir Talahaki. Prime Minister Netanyahu calling the deaths an unbearable tragedy. According to the IDF's preliminary investigation, a soldier saw them as a threat and opened fire, killing two instantly. The third man was injured and ran back into the building. Someone then cried help in Hebrew. The IDF then saying the battalion commander ordered his troops to stop firing, but another burst was fired, killing the third hostage. Uh, the IDF is doing everything we can. Uh, there's been uh, multiple successes. And there will also be mistakes. IDF Lieutenant General Herzi Halavi releasing a video statement saying the hostages did everything possible so Israeli troops would understand, being shirtless so they wouldn't be suspected of carrying explosives and waving a white cloth. But he said tensions overcame the situation and admitting the shooting was against the rules of engagement. That is forbidden to shoot at someone who raises a white flag and seeks to surrender. So far, at least 20 Israeli hostages have died, and more than 100 hostages are thought to remain in Gaza. Confirmation Saturday that another one was killed in Hamas captivity. 27-year-old Inbar Hyman. She tried to run on October 7th, but was captured by Hamas terrorists on motorcycles at the Rim Music Festival. Since the war began, more than 18,000 people have died in Gaza, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. Johnny Fernandez, ABC News, New York. Now to the latest recalls. Quaker Oats recalling several products because of salmonella concerns. Again, 
The company hasn't received any reports of infections related to the food, but they are still asking customers to throw out their granola bars and cereals to avoid any possible sickness. To see a full list of the, recall, the recalled granola, we have that, ksat.com. And another recall to tell you about this one, an actual salmonella outbreak linked to cantaloupe. Uh, it stands at 302 cases across 42 states. We actually know four people have even died from the salmonella outbreak. Whole cantaloupes, they are now being recalled. They're sold nationwide at Aldi, Trader Joe's, Quick Trip, Kroger, Sprouts, and Racetrack. The CDC also warning not to eat pre-cut cantaloupe if the brand isn't posted on the label. Okay, back here at home, we got one win for the Spurs, all right? We broke the 18 loss streak. So let's see if we can start a winning streak. And today's a perfect day to do that. Well, any day is a perfect day to do that. But this one specifically because it is Tony Parker's Hall of Fame game. It is happening today, 2.30 at the game at halftime. Fans are gonna receive a free shirt. There's also gonna be Tony Parker themed games and merchandise. Parker will be at the game during the halftime tribute ceremony for his re-raising of the retired jersey banner with the newly embellished Hall of Fame status. All right, the Mexican restaurant failing its health inspection last month, and that was the second time in just as many months. Tim Gerber paying that restaurant a special visit this week, asking special questions about the problems behind their kitchen door. Mexican restaurant located in the 3700 block of Nogalito Street failed their November inspection with a low score of 60. This after failing another inspection back in September. They got a 64 on that one. This time around, they racked up 21 health code violations. They were improperly cooling foods. The inside of the ice machine needed to be cleaned and sanitized to remove a buildup and the dishwashing machine wasn't sanitizing the dishes. A worker was cutting onions with bare hands. Another employee dropped a thermometer on the floor, picked it up, wiped it off with a paper towel, and was about to use it on some food before the inspector stepped in and stopped them. I stopped by this week to see why they failed two inspections in a row, but was told there was no manager available to speak to me at that time. I also noticed the business hadn't posted the inspection report which they were also cited for. Tienda Centro America, located in the 3900 block of San Pedro, earned a 76 on their inspection last month. They were selling food that was improperly labeled. Knives were stored with food debris on them. They were told to check for pest activity and they were storing food in non-food grade containers, including plastic shoe boxes and t-shirt bags. The business also had its license suspended due to a clogged grease trap. They were told to clear the drain and do a deep cleaning to remove sewage debris. I dropped by this week to see just how long they were shut down. A manager refused to go on camera but said they were only closed about an hour. A reinspection was required to reopen. Mary Chula Mexican Food, located in the 5,000 block of West Commerce, earned a 76 on their recent inspection. They had to throw out raw meat that was being kept in a cold unit that was too warm. They also tossed out black moldy produce that had a foul stench. The dishwasher wasn't cleaning dishes properly. The business also cited for using unapproved chemicals for pest control, including a tracking powder that they were instructed should never be used in the kitchen. Meanwhile, a few roaches were also found there in the kitchen. The business was in need of a thorough cleaning. They were also told to not feed the birds in the back of the business and to not allow miners in the kitchen when the business is open. A reinspection was ordered. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Time now just about 840, 43 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA. We're taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that, not a cloud in the sky. It is beautiful out there. A little cold now, but it is going to warm up. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio is Military City USA, and we have some amazing local organizations that step up and help out our military men and women. One of those organizations, Soldiers Angels. That is why this morning on Leading SA, Amy Palmer with the organization is joining us. Good morning, Amy. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for joining us this morning. So... For anyone out there who doesn't know about Soldiers Angels, tell us about you guys and what your mission is. 
Soldiers Angels is a national nonprofit organization. We provide support to our service members, wounded heroes, and veterans of all generations. Um, we are a national organization, and we're headquartered here right here in San Antonio. We were started 20 years ago by General Patton's family. That is amazing. So tell us about the Adopt-A-Family program. We are actually coming right down to the wire on our Adopt-A-Family program this year. We expanded eligibility to include active duty, guard and reservists that are in inactivated and activated. And so because we did expand our parameters, we had a lot of applications this year that were just too good to pass up on getting them in the program. Right now we have 370 families still waiting for adoption in the program. So we're hoping we can um, encourage viewers to get online today and, and adopt one of these families and get them helped for the holidays. And so when viewers out there, when they do help adopt a family, what does that entail? It's not too late. You know, of course, with online retailers, you can do things in 24 hours or less these days, but um, they would go in, register to volunteer with us. They can search for a family so they can see family size, the location where they live. They can read a little bit about them in their wish list, select the family they want to support. They um, will provide at least one gift or uh, toy for a child and then a 50 to to $100 gift card to go for their holiday meal. So it's super easy. It's not super expensive. You know, people... Um, can do that little or they can do a lot depending on what they'd like to do. But um, we have a lot of families out there and, and many of them won't have any gifts for their children this season without the adopt a family program. So we're really hoping that we can get these families adopted. That is amazing. So the adopt a family, obviously that is priority number one right now, but what are other ways that people can step up and help out the organization? Absolutely. You know, that is our first priority, but we have great things throughout the year. Um, we have campaigns all year long. Um, our Warm Feet for War sock drive with blankets, winter coat drives. Um, we also have a warehouse where we pack items. We're still packing holiday stockings at our warehouse in, here in town. So people can volunteer on our website at soldiersangels.org. They can, of course, donate money. Um, if we get cash donations, we're going to be using those to buy some gift cards for some families in, uh, you know, in need in the last few minutes. So monetary donations are always welcome. Um, but there's always a opportunity to get involved at soldiersangels.org. All right, Amy Palmer, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Anyone who missed any part of the interview that does want to step up and help out, we're going to have all that information on ksat.com throughout the morning. And speaking of the morning, it is a cold morning, Sarah Spivey. Are we going to start heating up anytime soon? You know, we are. We're already starting to warm up. We got down to 36 degrees this morning and temperatures are starting to get into the 40s in some locations. By 10, we'll be in the 50s. By noon in the 60s and the high today in the 70s max so your parents visiting from the northeast yeah. they're gonna like the weather this afternoon it's a relish in the heat a little bit <laughs> yeah taking a look outside right now we've got some of those wispy high thin cirrus clouds here's a look at temperatures around south central texas around the san antonio metro area bernie stage airfield right on the uh, border there of kendall and bear county was down to 32 but it's already 41 so you can see quick warm-up happening it's still slightly below freezing in bulverde it's 39 in New Braunfels, 45 Lost Maples, 36 in Hondo, 43 in Pleasanton, 36 in Kerrville. Temperatures quickly rising right now. Just by 10, we're going to be at 54 under mostly sunny skies. Noon, 66, completely sunny in the afternoon. Unlike yesterday when we had a few gusts up to 25 miles per hour, we're going to have a light and variable wind today. 71 this afternoon between about 3, 4 o'clock. And then if you have evening plans, maybe you're going to go look at some lines or enjoy some time with your family later on tonight. Make sure to bundle up because it's going to get chilly fairly quickly by nine. It should be in the 40s. So a chilly evening on deck after a warm afternoon. Here's a look at the afternoon temperatures forecast 71 in Kerrville, 71 in Del Rio, 73 Catula and Laredo, upper 60s in Rock Springs. It'll be 73 in Austin, 71 in Fredericksburg around the San Antonio metro area near 70 in Bernie, Bulverde, Helotus. In fact, near 70 for all of us. We're going to be running some five degrees above the average of 65 today. All in all, a nice day after the cold start. Now, why are we warming up so easily? Well, it's because we've got very dry air in place, dew points in the 30s. This, my friends, is chapstick weather. You need a little extra chapstick because it's nice and dry outside. And it's going to stay very dry through about Wednesday. Wednesday will still be pleasant, but by Thursday and Friday, that's when you'll notice some mugginess outside, especially by Friday. By Friday and th Thursday and Friday, we could even start to see some mist and drizzle in the forecast. Very light rain Thursday 
Thursday and Friday for us, but a few days here with pretty dry air in place and nice weather. Speaking of our next rain chance, by Thursday there's going to be an upper level low pressure system spinning energy and bringing it to uh, parts of Texas. Now the main area of rain should be up near the Dallas Fort Worth area. Once again, we're going to be on the tail end of things. Just some light rain, some mist and drizzle Thursday, Friday, and even potentially early on Sunday morning, which is Christmas Eve before that low moves off to the east and allows for us to have a dry Christmas day. More on that forecast in a bit, but first I want to talk about rainfall potential. Again, doesn't look great for San Antonio. Really, the area of rain will be up near the Dallas Fort Worth area. Yeah, they're not dealing with the kind of drought situation that we're dealing here in San Antonio where we could see perhaps a few tenths of an inch of rainfall if you're lucky. Uh, this is really going to be a lot like last week where we had some areas of light rain, some drizzle, and that was about it. And we need the rain. Uh, we've got extreme drought around San Antonio. So looking at your forecast, your extended forecast here, in the mornings will be chilly over the next few days with comfortable afternoons. Rain returns to the forecast on Friday. But by Christmas Eve on Sunday, I think we'll be starting to uh, wrap up the rainfall. Just a small rain chance on Christmas Eve when we'll get up to about 70. But Christmas Day should be nice, not too hot, not too cold in the 60s. We'll be back with more news after the break. Good morning and welcome back. How about this for a Christmas gift? A cheap find at a thrift store turned into a six-figure windfall for a Virginia woman. So the vase you look, is it vase or vase? I mean, this is 600,000, so uh, 100,000, so vase. Okay, That's so this vase was part, so <laughs> initially it was vase because it was $3.99. Okay. okay. Then it sold for over $107,000, so it transferred from vase to vase. To vase, mm. yes it did. All right, and the bottle was shaped featured, uh, sorry, the bottle shaped design features a swirling pattern, which with translucent red and opaque seafoam green glass. Like Christmas. Yeah, the woman said she noticed the vase mm. immediately, recognizing markings indicating that it was of a high-end Murano glass made in Italy. Turns out she was right. So the, the vase initially valued between thirty and $50,000, but as we told you, sold for more than double the top estimate. All right, speaking of the holidays, if you're a fan of Home Alone movies, well, we have the ultimate experience for you. Spoiler, it is not cheap. The Plaza Hotel <laughs> in New York City offering a Home Alone 2 package. Okay, how much is this? Guests can do almost everything Kevin McAllister does in the movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Right. It features a four-hour limousine ride to see attractions like the Empire State Building, Rockefeller Center, Radio City Music Hall, and Central Park. All right, before we see the numbers, how much are you guessing? How, night, how many nights is it? I think it's, I think it's one night. I'm going to go $4,000. Okay. Rates vary, but it can be added to any standard room or suite for a little less than $2,000. Yeah, but then the suites. So, right. You know, you're, you're spending for that. <laughs> okay. Chilly mornings in the days ahead in the 40s, afternoons comfortable in the 60s and 70s. It's going to be mainly a dry week, but by Friday we'll have areas of mist and drizzle in the forecast. And I'm calling it Goldilocks Christmas. Ooh. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Probably temperatures in chilly in the morning, but by Monday next week, the afternoon should be in the 60s. This is beautiful. 70 and sunny in the middle of December. Pretty nice. Enjoy your Sunday, everyone. Have a great day.